Good morning. How is everybody doing? If you would, let me know that you can still hear me. I know I tested it out a few minutes ago and it sounded like everything's good, but just want to make sure that uh, you are still with me. <laughs> hey, Will, how we doing? That is good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> As of right now, you never know how quickly things can change, right? You can go backwards really fast. But they can also go in your favor really fast too, right? <laughs> That's what I had this morning a little bit. Had a couple that just boom, five, 10 minutes. So welcome, welcome to Coach's Corner. My name is Tony Benson. We'll be your tour guide for the next hour. We're mostly going to play today, if that's all right. Um, GameStop. I haven't really messed with the meme stocks. I almost, actually, AMC popped up on my radar yesterday or the day before, and I almost pulled the trigger on it. And then I was like, yeah, it was tempting, but then it didn't quite hit my spot. So I just left it alone. So but let me get the disclaimer up there on the screen so you can all see that. It basically says we're not registered broker dealers, investment advisors. I will not give you any recommendations or advice. Everything that we do here is purely for educational purposes. If we do talk about a trade or show any trading, just assume that it is a practice or a paper trade. We do not discuss live funded trading for regulatory reasons. So let's see what we're going to talk. Actually, I'm going to go over a little stuff that's coming up here shortly. Uh, the premium online workshops, uh, Patterns in a Flash is next week. That's with yours truly. Uh, if you haven't experienced Patterns in a Flash yet, I would suggest uh, diving in head first, especially when you get a free two-week trial, right? And the beauty is that the uh, twice a month we do a live class, just like we're doing now. It's 100% live. It is exclusive for subscribers to that tool. And uh, so if you get set up with the uh, trial today, you have a full two weeks, then you can join me next week uh, for a full hour. At uh, it's eight o'clock Eastern time, a full hour where we basically just go through patterns and anything that uh, comes up. There's also uh, the pattern of the week. Oops, <laughs> pattern of the week's in there. So you'll have, uh, well, let's see if you have two weeks, you should get two patterns of the week. That's uh, every week I find a pattern that I like that I look to think is uh, a good opportunity, a good potential uh, candidate for the next week or any time in the future, really. Um, and basically, just go through and talk about the pattern a little bit and anything that hits my brain. And uh, thank you. There you go. If, if you're interested in getting that trial, the link is in the chat box. And I'm sure that will show up a few more times there. So uh, trading news twice a month. Uh, oh, one more thing real quick before I move too far past patterns of flash. I know I'm doing a shameless plug, but um, there are also quizzes in there. And this is what I suggest for anybody that's, especially if you're new, if you haven't experienced patterns of flash, go take the trial, take the quiz inside the tool. Uh, in fact, let's see. Should have it up here. I'm just going to very briefly go show you so you can see it. Just give me a second to get that switched over. This is what you should see there is, okay, yeah, it's turned. This is the tool itself. And it's all, there's all flashcards in here, right? Which if you want to learn to trade, to recognize the patterns, that's the purpose of that is to speed up the process. Uh, there's the pattern of the week. I know, apologize to those of you that are subscribers. There was a little technical glitch this last week. It didn't, it said it was posted, but it wasn't actually there, but they got that fixed quickly. So, uh, but right here, there's just quizzes. If you're new to trading, if you're new to technical analysis, if you haven't experienced patterns of flash, go take these. There's basically, there's four different quizzes inside of here. And I would suggest you go take these and all you do is click the answer that you think it is, come down to the bottom and hit submit and it'll give you the results, basically how, how you did. So if you aced all four of those tests, you probably don't need this. If you don't, eh, you might wanna consider it. At least get the trial and go through it. There's over eight hours of video in there. Um, and then like I said, the flashcards, the pattern of the week. So you get two weeks of free trial. So uh, moving on, trading you is twice a month. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, Will says the, the weekly pattern usually pays for the quarter. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, it's it does. Uh, <laughs> if I had to pay for it, then I guess it would pay for mine too. 
Uh, Inner Circle, July 15th, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Monster Market Movers is July 22nd. And then, of course, there's the Mastermind Group. Uh, oh, whoops. Uh, the free online workshops, the Power Hour, and then, of course, the Coach's Corner. <laughs> you heard that? Yeah, that was the bad one. But the one just a couple of minutes before that was a, was a good one. <laughs> so Actually, they're both good. I had a plan. Stuck to the plan. It stopped me out. So I took a $30 hit. What do you do? The other one, I banked like 50, 60, 80 bucks on just part of the position and the other one's still running. So we're good. <laughs> That's right. It was a good trade. As long as you have the plan, the, the uh, as long as you stick to the plan. So uh, power option plays Tuesday and Saturday and then cover call explore. Uh, you get on Saturdays and e-mini think tank uh, with Brandon there Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Speaking of stops, by the way, since you just heard a stop hit on one of my trades, I've got my other machine going here and I, I swing trade options, but then I day trade stock and I just started day trading the first of the year. I did it years and year, like 20 some years ago. And uh, it was hard to pass up. Somebody came to me and said, Hey, I've got this guy that uh, will give you $300,000 to trade with if you do trade intraday. And I said, okay. So I had to do it their style and it wasn't the greatest but I was splitting profits and he took all the risk. So it was some firm that did it. And I was like, cool, but I hadn't done it. Uh, and then I decided the first of this year to, to get back to it. And it's certainly fun. And essentially what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about stops, but what I want to do is go on to, uh, I've got toss open my practice platform, and we're going to go just look for patterns and uh, where to place them. So give me just a second, Robert, I'll get back to your question here in a minute. So basically, but this is, this is probably one of the biggest questions that, I've gotten over the years uh, in the couple of decades that I've been doing this trading and, and a lot of it coaching as well um, is where do I put the stop? And how do you determine what the best place is? And then one of the tricky ones is how do you stick to them? <laughs> so placing the stop, I'm, I'm obviously, as you've already seen, especially with considering that you see patterns in flash, I'm a patterns guy. Uh, it's all about the patterns. And the stop, in my opinion, should be based on the pattern. And when I say pattern, it also could just be a simple support or resistance level. So not just, not exclusively patterns, but I mean, patterns are a big part of that. So um, wherever there's a support or resistance level or something that, you know, if it breaks, then you should get out, right? It's essentially what uh, what we're looking for. And the best place is avoiding a lot of little things. Round numbers, which if you're not familiar with round numbers from a technical perspective, that's another subject that's in patterns in a flash. Um, there's a whole there's a whole lesson on that. Um, so yeah, we'll just get to that. And then the big thing is how do you stick to them? Which really comes down to not necessarily technical analysis, but emotional management. How do you manage your emotions? Oops. Okay, that was a good one, Will. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if y'all hear that, that's, and you'll hear it too. When, and really what we're going to do is basically look for some day trades on the practice account and uh, we'll see if we can find some of there. I mean, because this is all there is here. So let's go over to that real quick. Oh, let me hear move. Oh, awesome, Rob. Do you go by Rob? Rob or Robert? I don't know. So make sure I call you by the right name. I go by Tony, but if I'm in trouble, it's Anthony. <laughs> That's my mom's name. Whenever I was a kid, it's like, if I heard my full name, I'm in trouble. So, oh, that's awesome. He said he did a bull put spread on, on GameStop. It went against him. He bought back to short leg and rode the long leg and made even more. And that's the beauty of with... Um, Oh, what was that? That was trade you Monday night, I think, right? So in trade you Monday night, we talked about spreads and that being one option. And with a stock like GameStop and ones that are super volatile like that, then yeah, you can do that. It's it's definitely a way to to supercharge it, to get it, you know, if, if it goes against you. So that's one of the beauties of spreads, especially if it works out that way. I've got one right now that I didn't quite do that on it. I'm kicking myself right now, looking at it, wishing that I would have, but I'd be in better shape if I would have pulled it, but 
It's okay. I got one sitting out there to roll it out. So, okay. He goes by Robert Will. <laughs> yeah, you're sweating. It. <laughs> Usually you do, right? Especially this, because when it comes to that type of situation, you've got to, your timing has to be pretty impeccable. You've got to be able to hit it at just about the right spot. Because if you miss it, then it gets worse, right? If you buy it back at the wrong spot and then it bounces, then that other leg gets worse. So you're in even worse shape than you started with. So that's one of the tricky parts about spreads. It's one of the things that I've always found challenging. It's the one part that I didn't like them for is that it's really hard to do that unless your timing's really, really good. So yes, it is a wild morning. And speaking of stops, let's just go, whoops. Oops. Get over there. Now I'm wishing that one stop that I had in there wouldn't have hit. <laughs> it's funny. I realized I probably should have put it a little higher. So let's see. What do we have here? Yes, it's a while. It has been a wild morning kind of all week, it seems like. It's been very, very chaotic and crazy. Let's see if it is there. Yeah, here's a. Uh, so there's AMD. This is one that oops. I like the looks of this right now. Let's see if we can get so you can see obviously, and this is obviously happening in real time. This is a five-minute chart, by the way. Uh, this is AMD and it's just rolling down to, I should have kept that up. I'm going to try have to try to kind of hustle on this. So bear with me. I'm just, I'm going to do this as quick as I can and uh, see if we can get something that we can place a trade on. I don't want to take 86 is a round number. I don't want it too close to 86. I mean, three pennies away is not bad. 8601 was a little too tight. I think I am going to. my mouse go bear with me just a sec here so 8603 i'm just going to use my uh i've got a calculator i'll show it to you here 8528 i've got a risk reward calculator on my other machine i'm using real quick so we're going to put an entry point if you're not familiar familiar with risk reward give me just a sec let me get this done then i'll show you uh orange whoops Need to change the number on that. That should be 8584. Let me zoom way in so you can see this here. Whoops. 8584. So you obviously see on an intraday, we have a nice little downtrend. We confirmed it this morning when it hit and then it dropped off and it's right at that spot again. 85, 84, where's it? You know what? I'm going to call it good enough at 83. See if we can snag that real fast. Hopefully it's not too late. Eh, we may have missed it. Let's hope not, but if we did, we did. Dang it. <laughs> it's always irritating when it's just missing by a penny or two, but it happens. Uh, we'll sit here and watch this for a minute. While, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to change this. I usually just color code things. It doesn't take but a couple seconds. Um, welcome to day trading. Welcome to trading period. And here's the beauty of this. If, if you're newer to trading, if you're not that familiar, or if you're, you're just learning, um, I mean, what you're seeing is real time. It is, I mean, it is, you can see, oh, there we got hit. Okay, good. Um, this is real time. You can see, I mean, it's simulated trading, so it's practice trading, but it's the same as same as the real deal. Um, so the reason I picked the stop, again, getting back to, and I'm going to try to stay focused on that, is why we put the stop where we put it. So it's purely on technicals. And you can see, obviously, we have a nice downtrend that's in place. And 
I'll give you a little cheater. That it takes, if you haven't taken the quiz, if you go into the quizzes, then a downtrend can be long, a line, a downtrend line can be formed. Any support resistance, whether it's a trend line or support resistance, horizontal, uh, it takes two points to hit it, two points to draw it, a third point to confirm it. And you can see, let me grab my um, pencils here. You can see we got one hit here. We actually kind of got a second one here. So we, to a certain degree, I mean, you could call this one hit, it just depends on how you want to frame it. There's technically a third hit there. This morning it hit it again and dropped off. I mean, that you see that vertical kind of dash line that is uh, the separated from yesterday to today. So we closed right here in this little candle, gapped up this morning, recognized that trend line again, and we literally just came up and hit it as I was yakking. Thankfully, hopefully, and we don't know how this is going to turn out. Right now it looks good, right? You know, I just, I shorted 500 shares of it. So that's about, well, it's 40, 42,000 on the line. But when you go to pick a stop, you want to find the resistance. You know, if it's a pattern, if it's a, and realistically, we could draw a lower line, but I'm not worried about that. Whether it's a pattern or just a trend line like this. I mean, this is a simple, basic trend line that I drew that it's recognizing. And basically want to go far enough above that to say, okay, at what point, if it breaks back above this trend line, at what point am I no longer confident that this thing's going to move lower? That's always the question I ask. Say, okay, here it is. Here's where we're at. We're tagging that trend line, which you noticed. And for those people that, I mean, there's some people out there that say, oh, that technical analysis stuff, yeah, that doesn't work. Really? <laughs> I mean, literally, I mean, this is live. This is what's happening in real time. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it literally came up. In fact, I'm going to move this so you can see it a little clearer because I know I'm a little ADD if you can't tell. And some of this stuff, you know, if it's in the way it clutters up, I don't like clutter on the screen at all. It makes my head, just drives my head nuts. And I'm just like, ah, I get frazzled and can't see everything. This line was already here. In fact, I mean, on my other machine where I am trading live with funded money, this is just play money. But that line's already there and it literally just came up and tagged it and it's dropped off. And I mean, we don't know if it's going to stay down here. I mean, I could take it when you see we got 30 bucks of profit. We could bank that right now, or we could just let it go. And realistically, what I would do. So first question is, is it clear why I picked the stop on this? If any of you have any questions about it, just fire it off through the chat box. Or I don't know if there's a, this is streaming on YouTube live as well. So I don't know, I don't know if there's a way to tell. I don't know if anybody sent that message to YouTube or not, but if you are, I apologize if I miss it, but. Now what it'll do, okay, I got 500 shares. So if this thing's going to continue to fall, which you can see what, this is AMD, it can drop really quick. I mean, this morning it gapped up to 86.40 and it dropped to 85.20 real quick. That's a buck and a half in 20, 30 minutes. I'm expecting this thing to go back to this 85.28 level. But now what it'll do is say, okay, I got 500 shares. How much do I want to take out? There's a little bit of support right back here. I mean, there's a little dug in there, 85.68. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to go change. We'll just pop 200. Um, I don't like that volume stuff on there. Let me get rid of that real quick. I told you it clutters up my mind. There we go. That's all I want. It's just that. We're going to put some. Uh, 85.68. So we're going to buy to close 200. You see here, buy to close 200 AMD at 85.68. I'm going to throw an order in for that. And then what I'll also do is take the other 300 and I'll put a stop at 86.03. So I'm going to go up here and go 86.03. So this is buy 300 AMD. You see the stop, STP. That's a stop at 86.03. And that's to close it as well. So now basically what I've kind of done is set up a bracket to a certain degree. So if this thing drops off a little bit and it tags my 200 shares, then I'll come over and I'll either adjust the stop down 
or I'll just remove it and I'll maybe throw another 100 out here at probably 85.53. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do this. It's, you can trade things however you want to, however it makes sense to you. This is just one way I do it. It's, you know, and I change it up a little bit. Sometimes I won't even put a stop on there. I'll just put orders down there like Chewy this morning. I've traded that a couple of times and I just put three different orders. I'll put one there and then I might put another one at 85.54. So I have another 200 here. So if it just drops really quick, which it did, in five minutes, it dropped like 40, 50 cents and just took out both orders. Boom, boom, boom. Within three or four minutes, both of them got hit. So we'll see what happens with AMD. Let's zoom back out of there. So what the beauty is we've got this thing bracketed so that no matter what, which way it goes, something's going to hit. And in fact, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to actually move this stop down some. Since that line is trending lower, I'm just going to drag it down a little bit and adjust it since we're already moving in the direction we want, we're up 60 bucks in how many, a couple of minutes now, five minutes? How many, I don't know how long it's been. And I, I try not to look at that. Honestly, it's best not to. Because then you start thinking about the money and you go, Phew. and really what we want to focus on is placing a good trade and going off of what the chart tells us. And when the chart says it's time to get out, whoops. All right, we just banked some. So that just closed out 200 shares. And you can see from the profit loss open to the profit loss day, there's 30 bucks there, right? So we've banked, we've banked 30 bucks of profit. So what we did is just added a little bit of a cushion. So if, the, if this thing does turn around and backs up real quick on us, then we've already banked some profit. We have some more cushion. In fact, I'm going to drop that stop even a little bit lower. Well, no, I'm not. Let me change that. Never mind. We want to stay above that downtrend line. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to do this. I'm going to cancel that. And what I'm going to do is change this to 200. And if it gets down here to, let's see, that's 53. We're going to bail on another 200 at 53. So buy 200 AMD at 85.53 to close. Hit send. So now if this thing drops off like that again and hits that, then we'll get, we'll bail out of another and then I'm going to put a stop up here on, I got to go right back up there. I don't like, we'll call it 85.97. 97. So buy, buy stop 85.97. So that's up there. So basically we'll know what happens. You know, if it, if it backs up against us and goes up and hits that, it'll take out hundred and then we can decide what to do with the other 200. Yes, Will, thank you. Three to one risk reward. Always. <laughs> unless I've lost my mind, which sometimes happens. So yeah, three to one. In fact, that's a good time to bring that up. I'm glad you brought that up. Let's, uh, let me show you real quick for those of you that are familiar. So I'm going to go back into patterns and flash tool and so I use a three to one risk reward. That's what the lines that you saw on there were. And there's a calculator. If you click on calculator, this is, in fact, I'm going to see what were those numbers. I'm trying to adjust my screen so I can see everything. So on AMD, we had a stop of 8603. The target was 8528. So we put those numbers in there and 85, 84. Yeah, that's right. Oh, we got hit at 83. Oh, we put the order. Yeah. Stop by a penny. Oh, well, um, not a big deal, but you can see there's, so there's 19 cents of risk and 56 cents of potential profit. Now you can use this risk reward for anything, but basically what you saw on the screen is exactly what I do. Whether I'm doing a swing trade, and that's one thing I meant to bring up uh, before, whether you're doing a day trade like this on a five minute chart or you're doing uh, a swing trade, the beauty is that charting is charting is charting. Whether this is a daily chart, a five minute chart, a one minute chart, a tick chart, a weekly chart, a quarterly chart, it doesn't matter. The process is exactly the same. And look at this, it doesn't seem like much, right? 19 cents. But if you're trading this intraday, 
you know, if we get the whole thing, if this thing drops all the way to 8528, you know, we're looking at, I don't know how much, well, we're not going to take the whole thing because we're scaling out of it, right? But it'll be a good 120, 150, $160 profit without running the numbers, but just kind of eyeballing it. Which isn't too shabby considering it, you know, if it takes 20, 30, 40 minutes. But this is what I, this is what you'll see. I mean, that the more we do this and obviously, yeah, we got another 30 minutes. We're going to keep doing this. Let's keep, so, see if we can go find something else. Um, but that's where the risk rewards coming from. That's where the numbers are coming from. And the reason that this is important is because, where we go? let's get back over there. Well, and I had, uh, let me get it up here real quick. I don't know if I, dang it, I meant to have that. The other day, I think it was not yesterday, but the day before. Yeah, I don't think I can transfer this and show it. I don't know if I have that on here. I did, and again, I'm just looking at my day trades. I did one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, out of 10 trades, okay, again, paper trades, practice trades. Out of 10 trades, I only had three winners and seven losers. And I was net up 133 bucks for the day. That's why risk reward is so critical. Because if you only lose, if you lose $1 on a trade and you make $3 on another, you can lose on three trades and make three you lose on three trades a buck, right? That's three bucks. If you make three on one, you've broken even. So win-loss ratio wise, if you're 25%, you break even. In this case, I was three for 10. I was 30% and up 133 bucks for the day. That's why three to one is absolutely critical. Oh, all right. Yes, Larry. Day trading, swing trading, all trading. You can use four to one. The higher you go, the better. Three to one is, is the baseline, essentially. Anything lower than that, you know, two to one, you can, but it's not, you're 50 50. I mean, you're still, you still have to be 33%, but right. Because if you have two to one, you have $2 of upside with two to $1 of risk. You have two trades go against you. You lose two bucks. Um, honestly, I don't know about scalping, and I, honestly, I don't. I don't scalp. So I know guys that did it years ago, but they weren't very successful. <laughs> so I mean, well, I take that back. Let me let me tweak that a little bit. Kind of what you saw in AMD, I guess you could call scalping if you want to. I mean, we could get into a, a word dance and play little semantics games. Um. Because if I get triggered, you know, for 10 or 15 cents on part of a position, like you just saw here on AMD, right? We got into it and within five or six minutes, I took out 40% of the position, took out 200 of the, and it's still going and it's getting close to possibly, hopefully it might trigger this other one, which banks more profit. And then if it continues to fall, then we just get more and more. It's just gravy, right? Yeah, that's a good point, Will. So the higher the risk reward, the less trade you'll take. So if you go at four to one or five to one, generally speaking, just as a general rule of thumb, three to one is the baseline for me at least. Uh, unless if you get into to higher volatility instruments or a high volatility stock, then I'd bump it to four to one, maybe even five to one if it's super volatile. Because you're going to get whipsawed on a lot of them, right? It's going to be, it's one of those, if it's volatile and it swings a lot, then you have to have more upside because you're going to get stopped out a bunch, right? So if you're going to go trade the Amazons and the Teslas of the world, I'd go at least a four to one. So, okay. Oh, you know what I got to do here real quick? I'm getting so stuck on this. I'm going to actually move this one down. I'm going to move the 100, the 100 shares left there to down here to our, no matter what happens here. Well, if we get stopped out of there, it'll let us know. If we hit the 200, then we'll bank some more and then I'll come back and move that down. So let's go see if there's anything else that we can uh, find real quick.
there's a nice symmetrical triangle. I'm not sure that I love, love, love it, but it's definitely a pretty pattern. And the trend is kind of sort of up the last little while it has been sideways. So uh, this is essentially what I look for. And then if this thing was to break out to the upside, you know, there may be a bullish can bullish trade there. Big volume push on here on this, the last five minute bar. But I'm not in love with that. AVTR, keep, we'll keep that in mind. And true AstraZeneca. I don't like AstraZeneca this morning. It took a little bit of my money. <laughs> it was like 30 or 40 bucks, no big deal. I, I had stopped out of that. I can't remember exactly what I did. I think I, I can't remember if I went long or short. One of the good things about, one good thing to have in trading is a short memory. It definitely can come in handy. Because when you get stopped out of something that costs you money, <laughs> right? You don't, want to, you don't want to remember that. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a head, there's kind of a head and shoulders pattern there that's formed, but the neckline's down there at 58.88, so it's a little ways away. I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Uh, Bank of America's on a rally, but I'm not seeing... Yeah. And really there's another, there's a, actually, it's not the beautiful, beautifulest. Is that even a word? Beautifulest. It's not the prettiest head and shoulders in the world, but but if you're not familiar with the head and shoulders, the left shoulder, there's the head, the right shoulder, right? So this is an awesome pattern. That's why I always make a smiley face. And you can see the extent of my artistic ability, which is awful. I should have my daughter draw these things because she's awesome. I don't know where she got it. She can just she can just draw on the fly. Uh, but I don't love that one too much. Whoo, BMY just took off. Well, here's an example of a pattern. Again, just showing an example. This is a little too far. Ascending triangle. So getting back to the theme of the day. In fact, I'm going to put that. This one may be, I don't know. We got a little more, a little less than 30 minutes left here. Um, I don't know that this will present a trade here. But we essentially have an ascending triangle. Let me get back to a bigger picture. So you can see that resistance there at 66.16, right? There's actually, we could even, and depending on how far back you want to go. And again, this is a five-minute chart. But the reality is no matter which type of chart you're looking at, this could be a daily chart and the end result would be the same thing, right? And that is one of the beauties of technicals. That's one of the beauties of charting. Once you develop the skill and you, you know how to chart, you can transfer it to any time frame you want. You want a day trade, you want a swing trade, you want to be a position trader, it doesn't matter. It's one of those skills that literally in life you can learn it once. And I wouldn't say, I don't know if you can say master it. I mean, I guess you could, but it's one of those things that, you know, in, in most jobs, most industries, you have continued learning, right? You have to keep on learning. And granted, in trading, we have to keep learning too. But once you get the baseline of technicals down, there's not anything else to learn. It's not like it's new. It's not going to change in 10 or 20 years. I started over 20 years ago. You know how much has changed with technicals? Nothing. You know why? Because the charting, the underlying core baseline, what creates the patterns in the charts is human emotion. And what's the one thing that's never really changed throughout history? You got it, human emotion. Oops. <laughs> oh, we just got hit on AMD. We'll come back to BMY. Oh, we just got stopped out of that other 200. 
Okay, so we closed out of that one. So now the question is what to do with the rest of it. I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel this order real quick and take a peek and see what we wanna do here. Get this thing extending out. Whoops, I want to extend to the right, not to the left. So now the question becomes, what do we do with this other 200? And then somebody remind me where I was. <laughs> I was talking about something. Oh, charting. So what to do, what to do. Just put a stop up there slightly above the, or we just bank to profit right now. The one thing that, and this is the other thing that I look at is volume. You got the price chart, you got patterns, candlesticks, and volume. That's all I use on a day trade at least. Um, and this retracement is not unusual. It's actually relatively healthy. I mean, I always prefer to have things just tank and drop off really fast and just hit all my targets, but that doesn't happen very often. So what I'm going to do here is just put another stop on. We got 200 shares left. I'm going to put 85.94. I don't love going too far back, but it's... What are we getting? 84 is 10 cents. Yeah, we'll still have a profit. And it really doesn't matter. I'm really just looking at the chart. I'm not too worried about, you know, whether I come out with a monster profit or not. I'm really focused on just placing a good trade and making good decisions based on what the chart's saying. So if it breaks back above here and hits up there about 83, that's above that downtrend line. In other words, I would no longer be confident in the downward move if it gets above that downtrend line. That makes sense. So we'll just leave that stop in place. And get back to where we're BMI. What's, uh, did I already cover NVIDIA? I don't think so. Were we supposed to look at NVIDIA? Let's go look. Not really seeing much of a pattern. Well, there was, well, not right now. This is the beauty too, is that, and again, I mean, not to reiterate, but to reiterate, when it comes to trading, I mean, if you were looking at this at a daily chart and you saw this thing come up here to, well, 765, you see that all the times it's hit up here on the top. And then yesterday, I mean, we're looking at looking at the candles from yesterday. It came down and it used that as support. Where'd my pen go? I lost it. All right, so you've got all these spots where it tagged it at 765. One, two, three, four, five times it hit there. The next morning, boom, it gaps up and then just dances all day long. And then finally cracks and breaks down. And where does it dig in? Right there at that 765 level. Some people say this charting stuff doesn't work. Some people are crazy. Whoops, did that slip out? Um, <laughs> because it digs in there and then runs. Now this is something that, you know, day trading, you're gonna have a lot of cash to day trade this thing, but there's five bucks, which isn't huge. I mean, it's a $765 stock. But then the rest of the day yesterday, it dances around. And then this morning it gaps up and it tanks, and what does it do? It cracks right through that line. Not only does it crack that line, and this is a perfect example of a breakout. Not only a breakout, but a big breakout with massive momentum, lots and lots of volume. That is a very telling story. And then what happens is it bottoms out a little bit, comes back up, and where does it find resistance? At the old support. If you want to know why it does that, go into the role reversal lesson on patterns in a flash. That is exactly what happens. In fact, it did it. How many times did it do it on this chart? Well, let's see. Here's resistance. Boom. It breaks above it in a big way, a big gap. And where does old resistance become new support? Right at the same spot. Then boom, it breaks it. And that old support becomes new resistance. New again, I should say, because it was just back here. Again, if this was a daily chart, you'd have the exact same process. The exact same analysis would take place. 
And then you would, you'd be looking at an entry point here. In fact, let's do that is let's say we were going to trade this. Where would you put a stop? Just again, get your mindset into say this was a daily chart. I'm going to come up and draw the line slightly above the range of where it's been. So you can see 76502 is the resistance level. You've got a bunch of little shadows back here. When it when it hit back here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, five or six days where it ran above that 765. So I want the stop to be above those because this very well could run up just in the middle of the candle, run up and hit it and then turn around, right? So I don't want to be in that spot where I get whipsawed out like this, like this candle that we just had. Whoops. Wrong direction. That one right there, it poked just barely above that 765, but then it turned over. So I don't want to get whipsawed out. So I put it in this case, I put the stop above that line and then also taking into account the ones from the recent past that were there as well. So now we'll go make that red. Now where's the target? That's the next big question. Well, I think the range right here, we can see several different hits on that spot. So I would put the target there. Well, and you can see, I mean, obviously if we would have traded this, but would have, could have, should have. That's a dangerous syndrome. That's another lesson in patterns in the flat. Well, I think that is. Is there what it could show in there, Will? I can't remember. <laughs> I think, I, I know I talk about it. I know there's a specific one about it, but so the targets are at 758. So I will make that green. And now we just put in the numbers 765, 63. Target is 758. I know you can't see that. So 763.78. So buck 85, buck 85 a risk, 553 upside. So now we'll drop a line on here. Just put it anywhere. Double click it. And then I paste it there. Is that Was that the number? 763.78? I think that was it, right? Yeah, 763.68. Let me put that on the left so I can see it. So there is the trading plan for NVIDIA. Obviously, it's a little late. You know, look at hindsight, which is always 2020, right? But had this popped up on the radar, and this is what happened, especially when you're day trading, I have this happen all day, all day, every day where you see something, but it's already made its move and it's already too late. It happens, it's gonna happen whether you're day trading or swing trading, no matter what kind of trading you're doing, it's gonna happen. But the beauty of this is if you catch it beforehand and that is the key to trading, right? Is seeing it beforehand and getting in position before it makes its move. But as far as processing goes, that is a stop, right? And again, that's what we're here to talk about today is how to place a stop. Well, there's the number one way I do it. You find a support or resistance level pattern, whatever it is, and slightly above the resistance or, or support at the point where I would look at it and say, okay, if it hits this point, I'm no longer confident in this thing going in my direction. That's the point you place to stop. And then you place the target also based on the chart of where it looks like it may go. Sometimes if you have a pattern like a head and shoulders, you know, you'll take the measured move or symmetrical triangle, you have a measured move. And then just do it there. In this case, you know, there's that 758 level, which has hit three times in the last couple of days. So there's some spots right there where I put it. So put the target there and then just punch the numbers in. So first thing you do is figure out the stop. Second thing is target. And then the entry point is just simple math. Make sense? Uh, let me grab it. Larry. Hopefully I didn't. I don't think I missed any other questions, did I? 
Just making sure. Is this your normal process for day trading? Just looking through your charts at the patterns? Yes. Day trading, swing trading, trading in general. This is what I do. Please explain measure moves. Thank you, Leo. Let me see. Let's go back. I think we're... Oh, AMD hasn't quite, quite hit yet. Ooh, here we go. Hang with me just a second, Leo. Okay. How much do we have? Uh, where's that? Dang. Watch this. We're going to see if we can't re-enter this trade because look at this, baby. It just came back up and hit that, and it's recognizing it right now as we speak. I don't know if it's – we might have missed it by a minute or two. We'll see. So I just threw an order out there for a couple hundred more. So this is what this is this is not uncommon, but it, uh, if it rehits us and then it continues to fall, as long as it recognizes that downtrend line, I'll keep trading it. We already banked a little bit of profit. We banked forty bucks of profit. If it hits it again, and here's where this is a beautiful position to be in, right where we're at. And let me just show you this. This is where I love being in a place where I don't care what this thing does. If it pops up a little bit and puts me into more. If it puts me back in another posi more position, basically doubling up what I have right now, then great. I've already banked some profit, right? So even if I do get stopped out, okay, we just got tagged on it. Even if I do get stopped out, I'm going to leave that 200 there. And then I'm going to put another, we got 200 there still. We'll put a stop at the other 200. And if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. It's going to cost, okay. Now I'm going to be in a position where if it stops both of those out, I'm probably going to take a little loss. So be it. If it tanks from here, then I'm in good shape. But there's the beauty is I've already banked a little profit. I just re-entered the trade based on the chart. And if it does, again, if it stops me out here, we're looking at what, 15, probably a 50 or 60 or $70 hit. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. If it hits me, it hits me. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Okay, so we'll see what happens with that. Let me see Leo real quick. And this is one thing. Um, there we go. This will be good. Might be a good example. It's going to be the example I'm going to use anyway. It's not the beautifulest head and shoulders. There's that word again. So a Leo measure movement is something that I cover extensively, obviously, in Patterns of Flash, because when it comes to patterns, there are some patterns, most of them price patterns, where basically you measure a certain distance from one point to another, and that gives us an idea of approximately what kind of move, if it breaks out of the pattern, we can expect. In fact, I'm going to make this super big. Make it red. Is that thick enough, I wonder? Yeah, okay, there we go. So with the head and shoulders, we measure from the head to the neckline. <laughs> exactly well <laughs> yeah so on the, the head and shoulders you measure from the head to the neckline i'm going to duplicate this and then you take that amount and you say okay if it breaks below the neckline that's about how much we expect it to move so you can see in this case and this was i don't know what dollar amount that is but i don't know if the 5086 to 5250 that's about a buck and a half so if this head and shoulders was to break Right, so you got the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. If it breaks this neckline, this line right here is called the neckline. And I would suggest waiting for that to break because if you don't, it could use it as support, which I've done many times and it was painful. But if it breaks the neckline, so if it breaks below 5080, the expectation is for it to move down to here to about 4920. which if we put a line down there, I'll bet there's some pretty solid support. There's a little bit of support right there. Actually, there's even more down here, a little bit beyond that. There's some in there too, but... So that is... Uh, you're right, Leo. You're welcome. That's Yeah, that's what a measure move is. And again, I go through it extensively. All that stuff's covered in Patterson and Flash, so...
Well, what is this market going to do? Let's go back to AMD real quick because I see it's. Sixty-four. You know what? I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to drop one down here below since we're not going to keep watching this. Gosh, we only got 10 minutes left. This is going fast. Flying by 8564. By to close 8564. So I'm going to move over down here. So if it drops off, if it drops off real quick in a few minutes and we're not watching it, it'll tag and bank some more profit. If it doesn't, it'll tag and, and basically obviously let us know if it hits this other 200 stops. So we basically have kind of a bracket there. So what was that? Uh, wait for it to break or wait for it to retest? Which one are we talking about? Oh, on B, B, e, key, B key, whatever, whatever that is. Oh, on the head and shoulders. Wait for it to break or wait for it to retest? Which one? Yes. <laughs> that is the answer. Um, it all depends. And that's where, again, that's where, you know, having that charting skill is good to have when you have a good understanding. Um, yes, conservative versus aggressive. And here's what I say, I'm both. So let's just real quick. So trading plan wise, again, I, I, I kind of keep forgetting to go back to stops, but as far as placing a stop on this, so if we use that neckline, okay, let's just say that if this thing breaks the neckline, we want to get bearish on it, whether that's shorting the stock, buying puts, doing a bear call spread, whatever strategy you utilize, doesn't really matter. But if it breaks the neckline, I'm going to look to place a stop slightly above, obviously slightly above the neckline and also look for other points right? Like here, right? And here, those are all support levels. And I want to be slightly above where those are at. I don't want to be too tight because then you get stopped out. Of course, right now I just noticed that 5098. And if you haven't done round numbers, I'm going to move that actually to 5002. That's maybe a little higher than I would like it. But at the same time, there's a massive range here. So there's a huge opportunity. So putting a stop a little above 51, a little bit above that round number, because round numbers are very popular, right? A lot of people trade at round numbers. So I don't want to be too tight. So stop 5105. And we're going to put that 49.24, that first little spot there for a target. So 5060 is going to be our entry. Whoops. Uh, it keeps moving on me a little bit. Whoops. 5060. I just use orange because that was the one that only bright color that was left. I've been doing it for years. So, whoops. So here is what I would say to consider if this was something you were going to trade. That is a good, good thought process. If the market's dropping, entered at the neckline. So what would be wrong with doing this? Let me duplicate this and say, okay, if it breaks the neckline, we'll take this candle right here. This low right here, which is the low of the last, I don't know, what is it, 56? If this was a daily chart, then that would be the low there. So I would look at it and say, okay, if it breaks that level, then I'm pretty confident that it's going to continue to fall. So especially if it breaks it in a big way, right? What was the one that we just looked at? What is going on here? Uh, 
Was that, was it AMD? What was the one that we, I can't remember which one we're looking at, but basically if it breaks in a big way, so if it was to break the neckline, was it BMY? No. Ooh, that thing's come back. There's an ascending triangle that broke out in a big way and it's pulled back. So there's the, that support level of 66.16 would be a place to look at, but we're not going to have time to get into that, unfortunately. Uh, so if it breaks the neckline in a big way in a, a very fast, very high, high velocity, high momentum way, so if it starts to come down and it attacks the neckline, I would maybe put a hook down here for just a small position. So, okay, if it breaks it, right? And again, I know I talk about this quite a bit in the, the sections and patterns of flash where it's uh, potential entry points, where you would might want to get in. Then I like to step my toe in the water, right? Pick up just a little bit. A little bit here, a little bit there. So in this case, I'd say, okay, at 50, 74, I just want to pick up a small position. If you're shorting a stock and you're going to do, say, 300 shares, maybe just 100 to start. And that way, if it breaks back above the neckline, if it's a false breakout, you don't have a lot of risk on the table. And then if it continues to fall, you add to it at 50, 60, the original entry point. So you get aggressive with a small position and then wait for the more conservative entry point to add to it. But that puts you in a good position because you're already ahead of it, right? Kind of like AMD. We'll go back to there. And look at this. Did we get, yeah, okay, we got stopped out on the other part. Now the question becomes, what do we do with the rest of it? I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. We'll run this right into the last couple of minutes. Okay, now it's above that trend line. And... We've got this, uh, where are we at? Oh, we've got three seconds left. We've got this uh, this resistance right here, which we're breaking about out above. The only thing about it is there's not a lot of volume to it. So this is not convincing for the bulls. What does, doesn't necessarily mean a lot, doesn't mean that it's a, it's not necessarily a good or bad thing. If it had a lot of volume, I'd be more concerned. If it had a lot of volume, I'd be just stopping out right now. But it doesn't, so we're going to watch. Oh, I guess we have a couple minutes left. I thought we were about to change candles. So I'm going to wait for this one to close. Unless it bolts, if it bolts up really high, really quick, you know, if it hits the 8603, I'll just stop out of it. But you can see clearly we're above that trend line now. We've broken above that, not in a forceful way, which is not a not a real bullish sign. So we'll see what it does from here. If it can, if it drops off a little bit, we'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens. But see, this is why sometimes it's important to wait for the close, even on an intraday chart on a five minute, whether it's a daily or five minute, doesn't necessarily. Matter. It's one of those where usually we want to wait for the close. You can't always, sometimes it moves really quick and you've got to just stop out. What was I before? I was on a thought earlier and I wanted to, I was, I was going to come back and finish it, but I forgot what it was. I think it was something about just generically about technical analysis and why it's just, it's a good skill to have, right? It's one of those things when you learn to read the charts, you're set, right? And this is, I mean, what you've seen so far today, and this is really, it, it couldn't have worked out more beautifully. And even though, I mean, the only thing that would have made it beautiful is if this thing would have tanked and hit the target, and then I could show you a big giant profit. But honestly, I don't care. Because the reality is that this was a good trade. Whether we come out ahead or not, or it stops out, we take a 20 or $30 hit, it was a good trade. We got in at the right spot. We took some profit at the right spot, which gave us a little bit of a cushion. We got out, we stopped out of part of it at the right spot when we should have. And even though right now, you know, we're basically at break even, this has been a spectacular trade. And the reality is that when you do this, whether it's, again, whether it's an intraday like we've done here, or if this is the daily chart, and this 
process plays out over an entire, you know, what is this? How many candles are we at here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Yeah, but, well, basically 12 candles. 11 or 12 candles. This would be an 11 or 12 day process. I know it's not fun, an 11 or 12 day process having to break even, but it is what it is because you know what? The next time you do it, you break even on the time you do it, it might just take and tank off and drop off to 85.28 and you're making a nice healthy rate of return. The reality is, just like I said, it was not yesterday, the day before, was out of 10 or 11 trades, I only was profitable on three of them. The rest of them were losers, but they were all small. You know, 40 bucks, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, one was five bucks, one was 78 bucks. One was actually 250. But the three profitable ones I had were big enough to make up for all those little ones. That is why the three to one is so important. That's why the risk reward is such a critical component. It is one of the most important things with respect to trading as far as I'm concerned. Because as long as you have that in place, then the odds are in your favor. The key to is sticking to it. Making sure that you, <laughs> if you let something go bad and it gets worse and worse and worse, that's what's going to kill you. You have big giant losers and little tiny winners. You got to flip that script over. And there goes AMD. Um, SPCE, Virgin Galactic. Oh, this, I remember seeing this the other day. It popped up on the radar, but is this, I'm assuming, is this earnings related or what? That's a massive amount of volume. And we're going to wrap up with this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. I'm assuming this is some kind of news. It has to be some kind of news. I mean, 38 million shares, that's massive. Clearance to fly civilians. Oh, is this the space one? Virgin Galactic for, oh, space exploration. Okay. Okay, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Good. Obviously, there's something driving this. There's, you don't have this kind of move in stock without some kind of catalyst. Yeah, Branson, I, he's kind of crazy. I like the guy, though. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know him, obviously, personally, but... Um, as, as far as how to trade this, I don't like these. I mean, it's, it's hard to say the momentum to the upside is so massive and it's run so far so fast that, I mean, how much more upside is there? I mean, there could be a massive amount as far as, you know, looking for some kind of pattern there is, I guess you can call this a pennant pattern or a flag type of pattern, which is actually could be a good thing if it breaks out to the upside. It's definitely a flag pattern, which is, you know, you got a big flag pole and then a pennant or a flag pattern where it's basically just consolidating. I mean, if it breaks above 55, 56, then yeah, it could, it could continue. It could go. I mean, it's been as high as about 60. So then it comes down to a matter of risk reward. If you get in at 55 and it only runs to 60, how much risk do you have? And is the potential reward worth it? I mean, that's really what it comes down to for me on pretty much everything. It's all about odds. Trading is about odds. And then once you have the odds figured out, then you set up a, a trading plan, just like you've seen today. Where's your stop? Where's your target? You do the math, you put in the entry point. And from there, it's just a matter of managing your emotions, which we'll go back and I'm going to close out with this here real quick. You know what I'm going to do with this? This is what I would do if I had to leave my house for some reason, which sometimes I do. Most of the time I'm not, but if for some reason I had to leave, what do we got? 200 shares. So I'm going to make a trailing stop on this. I'm just going to let it go. And then whatever happens, happens. We're at 80, 54. And if you're, if you are in a position where you can't sit and babysit it, this is a great option to do something, do a trailing stop on something. So I'm going to trail it by 15 cents, which would be, let's see right now, it'd be 70, which yeah. So buy 200, trailing stop, market 15 cents. Hit send, it's going to throw that on there. Now this thing's just going to go and I'm going to let it be. And if you're with me next week in uh, the Patterns of Flash class for subscribers, then remind me, we'll come look at this. I know Will will be there. You better be with our Will. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, big resistance is 60, exactly. So we'll go look at this and see what happens. So if, if you don't, like I said, if you don't have patterns of flash, go get it, at least get the trial and uh, kick the tires and see if it's a value to you. So we'll see what happens with AMD. 
and just let it go. So, but regardless of how this thing plays out, how it finishes, especially with the trailer stop on it, this was a good trade. It was a beautiful trade. Even if it loses 20 or 30 bucks, it was a great trade. We got in at the right spot, got out the right spot. We stopped. Everything about it was, was absolutely perfect. Not tooting my own horn. It's just, it's, uh, it just, because I don't always trade this well. I'm to a point where I don't make as many mistakes as I used to. But this is getting, uh, especially with the day trading, this is, this is, uh, this just worked out beautifully today. And actually the last few weeks I've been pretty on point like this most of the time. So how do you get patterns of flash? VJ, there is a link inside the chat box there. You should have the link that says wealth builders HQ slash patterns in a flash. So just click on that. If for some reason you can't then call in support will take care of it. they're spectacular. Support is absolutely awesome. They will take good care of you. Whether you, if you can get it on the, the website, get it there. If not, just call in and they'll take care of you. They'll get you set up on the, the two week trial. So and then uh, you'll also have access. There's a there's a spot in there you can email in and uh, send me a message directly. So if you have questions about anything or if for some weird reason there's a technical glitch, the pattern of the week doesn't show up, then let me know through that or support either one <laughs> and we'll get it fixed. That's the first time. It's the only time it's happened. I have a feeling it probably won't happen again. So you're welcome, PJ. Thank you. We'll see you next week then, I bet, right? So, all right. I am now a few minutes over. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Appreciate y'all coming and hanging out. Yeah, there's the email. If you need help with support, support it at wealthbuildershq.com. So send it in. So awesome. Thank you, Oscar. I look forward to seeing it. Send me a message in there when you get the trial. Shoot me a message, say hi. And if there's anything that you need, let me know where you're at, what you're looking for. So, all right. Thank you all for joining me, having some fun. Y'all take care. God bless. Bye-bye.